The South African National Defense Force is assisting police in their investigations following a shooting in the Eastern Cape that left seven people dead. It's alleged that a taxi dispute is the motive behind today's incident. National SAPS spokesperson Brigadier Vish Naidu joins me now with the latest. Brigadier, thank you very much for your time. How many suspects is this joint operation in pursuit of? A very good afternoon to you, Annalise, and thank you for this opportunity. Well, we, we haven't uh, really confirmed a figure or a number of suspects as yet, but because uh, uh, there was a group that was actually involved in the, in the shooting. So what I can say is it's multiple suspects, um, definitely not less than 10, uh, if I may say that. But uh, the number has not um, really been confirmed. And what's your combined manpower in this joint operation with the SANDF? The, National, uh, the Acting National Commissioner of Police has ordered for reinforcements to be sent down to the Mount Ailes area to assist uh, um, in twofold. One is to assist in ensuring that the area is uh, stabilized and then uh, normalized. And secondly, to assist uh, in the search as well as in, in, in the investigation. We have um, mobilized the 72-hour activation plan, a plan which entails the mobilization of critical resources like crime intelligence, forensic experts, uh, detectives, and so forth, as well as your tactical teams. So we have done that mobilization. And then um, later this afternoon, or should I say early afternoon today, uh, we got confirmation that the SANDF will be joining us, will be joining forces with us uh, as a force multiplier to assist us in searching for the suspects, both with manpower as well as with their equipment, helicopters and other equipment. So the area uh, that this group of suspects is to believe, believed to be hiding out in is very difficult to search. How will you be overcoming the challenges of the terrain? Well, of course, we, uh, without going into too much of details, we do have uh, plans um, you know, to do that uh, in, in searching the area. Uh, hence, we requested the assistance of the SANDF and uh, decided to send in those uh, force multipliers from within the SAPS. Um, so we do have um, uh, our strategies in place in which to conduct the search. We did, we, we did confirm through a follow-up media statement that this, the area is quite vast, it's undulating, and it's very unforgiving uh, uh, terrain that we're dealing with. But it's expected that if somebody is running from the law, especially after being involved in, in multiple murders and attempted murders, you would expect that they would choose to go in such an area uh, to, to, uh, to use it as a hideout. But uh, we, we have started the search, and I think with the assistance and cooperation that we're receiving from the local community uh, as well, it's going to assist us a great deal in tracking down these suspects. The shootings are believed to be part of a taxi dispute. Have any members of other taxi associations been brought in for questioning to assist in identifying who these suspects may be? We, we haven't really confirmed the motive for the attack as yet, but of course we are investigating various theories around this and uh, the possible uh, theory of taxi violence or a taxi dispute uh, being one of the motivational factors to this attack has not been ruled out. Uh, it's been considered, but we haven't confirmed an actual motive as yet. Once we have uh, made a rest and we are... Um, are able to confirm the actual motive, we'll do so then. Mm. Are you able to give us any details about the identities of those deceased? What I can tell you is that uh, at least three or four of them um, are, are in, the, in the age group of about 60 plus years. Some are below, um, below 40, but I don't, I, we do have the names of the seven deceased as well as the six that were admitted in hospital, wounded, but we're not in the position of disclosing the identities at this stage until we have confirmed that the next of kin have been informed. Such a tragic day for those who lost their lives and for their families. Are you able to give us an update on uh, the situation that those injured, uh, is their condition critical? Um, have we lost any of those who were rushed uh, to hospital in the interim? and how many people were injured in this incident? Um, well, at the time that they were taken to a hospital, it was reported, and that which, of course, was very early hours of this morning because the incident did take place at 5 a.m. this morning. 
Um, it was reported that they were in a serious condition. Um, we are waiting reports from the uh, doctors and the hospital as to the condition, what the conditions, um, what the condition is of the of all of those that are there. We're also treating those victims as suspects, so we would very much like to speak to them, to for them to shed light on exactly what happened and who might be responsible or behind these attacks. Um, so, but right now, I cannot tell you exactly what the condition uh, is of each of those uh, in hospital. But furthermore, I also cannot say exactly which hospital they are in because this will compromise their security. Is it standard procedure to treat uh, those who've been injured during a, a situation, an incident like this, as suspects? Or is the nature of the crime what's led you to think that those who've been injured might have been involved? Well, as we indicated in a statement earlier, that the, the, the victims were as a result of a clash between two groups. So we cannot rule out the possibility of all of them, including the deceased, having been suspects in, in the incident. So it's not as if it's one group just attacking another group. So the injuries as well as the deceased have come out of both groups. So we are treating all of them as suspects as well. Well, thank you very much for that update. That was Brigadier Vish Naidu, spokesperson for the SAPS. That